I'm Muriel, CEO, mum and educator. I used to work really hard and sacrificed important things to me until I lost my motivation. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned and I found a way to reach great results while working less. Today, I'm obsessed with helping other leaders build meaningful lives. So each week, I'll be sharing inspiration to change your life and organization. This is Rebel Leader with a Heart. Hi, Lisa. Welcome in Rebel Leader with a Heart. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me on today. You're welcome. Maybe you can tell us who you are a little bit before we dive into the subject of values. Absolutely. So um, I am founder and CEO of a communications agency called Roland Ransfield, and we're based in Manchester in the UK. And we've got a team in London and we have a partnership with an agency in L.A., um, and what we do is we help brands and uh, businesses and individuals tell their story and really use their platforms um, for a purpose. So um, we help them do that. It's about building relationships between those organizations. And we use tools such as um, media relations. We'll use social media, uh, lobbying, uh, influencer marketing. So the whole kind of range of tools, but at the heart of it is about creating those purposeful relationships. Great. And you specialized in values also. Why did you decide to specialize in values or what's the link between communication and values? Yeah, well, it, um, the reason we went, we, this happened, it was like, it, it was quite a kind of a, it was an epiphany as an organization in actual fact. And we now offer um, a service and support to clients in terms of them really finding their values and communicating those values. And if they aren't clear on the values, then helping them to understand what's important to them and helping them to build that into the DNA of their organization. Um, but it came um, as most uh, kind of revolutionary things do come from, from a moment in which um, I suppose I was struggling with some boundaries personally in my life. Um, and that translated into po possibly the, the culture that was in our business at the time. So the company then had about 40, people um, were an SME and because they'd wanted to go through some quite quick quick growth we'd taken on a number of people who had lateral hires so fairly senior people who joined from different businesses and agencies and they all had a you know very good credible track record but what I noticed over a period of time was after that honeymoon period was over I really felt that the ethos of what we stood for as a business And this is a business at that point that was probably 21 years old. Uh, we're now 25 years old. It was really making me feel uncomfortable in lots of different ways. And that wasn't about the client delivery side. I mean, that was still very, very good. It was more about the human side of the business, how we showed up as a team, how we treated each other, the things that were non-negotiable. Um, and it went from sitting... A little bit so I felt a little bit out of kilter because again I also wanted to empower people in the team to be able to make their own decisions rather than having a kind of hierarchical way of running the business um, but it just got to the point when I was like not really wanting to go into the office even though the business was doing very well um, and we had a, an office move and I ha happened to be away on holiday and we couldn't change the date and when I came back and I switched my phone on um, all hell had let loose. And at that point, I thought, we have to do something about this. So I came back into the office and we sat everybody around the table and I said, I want to talk to you about values. And long story short, that was the beginning of our journey as an organization, which absolutely changed who we were. It changed who we work with. It changed who worked with us. Um, And it was a piece of work that we did with a consultant that I'd known um, a while back, um, which literally uh, changed the face of how, how we show up as an organization and individuals. So as a result of that um, piece of work, we've been able to really help clients go down the same route. And what has been uh, overwhelming to kind of understand is that how few organizations, no matter how small or how large they are, they don't know what the values are. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. If they have and if they have any values, they're quite often stuck in a drawer somewhere. And they're on the walls really or on the on walls the wall. and posters. Absolutely. But but nobody could recite them. Nobody could tell you what they are. And and the piece of work that we've done um, means that it's impossible for us not to ask clients their values and understand and 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 really see those clients, you know, walk the talk. It's done so much for us. It's been liberating for us individually um, and for me personally, because once you have set your company values um, and we can talk later how we actually make sure that they are lived every day, it means that if there's a set of behaviours that as a leader you're not comfortable with within your organisation, it's not that teacher-pupil situation where you have to say, no, that's not okay for me. It's not okay for the organisation and for your colleagues because it's on the wall but it's not just on the wall it's in your language it's in everything you do it's in the type of people you work with it's about the clients you work with so it's a liberating um and um safe environment for everybody to work within yeah no i i really find values very important and um this is now a trend that has evolved in the last years where values are becoming more and more important in organizations and not simply we need like a value purpose mission, a check the box uh, a list, but really about who are we? Because a lot of people had, or a lot of organizations had to reinvent themselves with the pandemic and th see how are we going to adapt to what is happening. And so I, I see a lot of work being done on those values and really being lived mm. at least at the top. And then uh, they try, of course, to let it sink in within the whole organization. Very much so. Yeah. And, and I think it's really important that you bring, um, that your team has to be organized. It has to, your team has to be involved in that process. And again, um, I think no matter how big your organization is, Obviously, it's easy for us to do that piece of work because we could all sit around a table and we could thrash those things out. But there needs to be, um, in bigger organisations that we work with, there needs to be working groups um, so that it feels lived, it feels that everybody has been involved and can own those values. Um, I also think in an SME, in a, in a small um, a smaller enterprise, those values have got to resonate with you as a leader. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for me... There was no way, and we did have, you know, we, we've got a new office now, which uh, so we've moved recently, but in our old office, we had all the values on the wall. It's beautiful. I mean, but it wasn't just on the wall. You know, everybody was involved in those values. Each week, we ch take a value, and one of the team will choose a value, and we do that now. And then at the end of the, the week, we talk about how we've shown up against that value. And were there any points within what we did that week where we were maybe found it difficult or we weren't aligned so it's a working it's a working language for us um and it was interesting you you mentioned there in the pandemic um we had a, a, a press conference uh, in the uk with the prime minister and we, we huddled around one, one laptop um in march last year uh, two years ago and we were all so you know we didn't know what was going to happen we had no clue as to you know were we going to get back in the office? And on that day, when we were going to work at home the next day to trial it all out, um, everyone left the office and I stood um, in front of that wall and I looked at all the values and I'd read every one of them. And I thought that we may not come back in the office this week and we may not come back in for a very long time. But when we do come back in, um, even though the business may be very different, the values will stay the same. And we didn't come back in for a, for a significant amount of time, but the values are the things that kept us together. The bit, they were our brand, it's how we show up. So that's what made, when you're sitting in a remotely at a, a kitchen table, you're part of that, that business because those, those values are so important to you as, as a team player, as a team member. Yeah, no, I, I agree, I agree. But then I, I have a question because I'm very values driven. Uh, I started my business thinking about the values and the purpose. And um, I don't find it always easy to translate those values from a one-to-one -one conversation. That's quite easy. It, it transpires quite easily. 
to a one too many. So when you're doing your social media posts, uh, I, I find it more challenging to to really be authentic in those values in everything you do in the one too many. So do you have any strategies or tips for that? So I think um, it has to be um, it has to be part of the organization's language. Um, so, for example, one of our values and my favorite value is um, plant trees you'll never see. So that's leave a legacy out of respect for those who follow. Um, as a business, we do that every day. We we um, we're aware of our legacy and we're aware of our platform and the need to use our resources to create more resources. So so I know every single team member because that's the language you speak, that is a type of thing that we will share on social media, people doing great stuff in their communities. It's absolutely runs through us all. So it's it's not, um, I don't have to remind people that that's what our, our um, value is. The way that we choose to work with clients, we wouldn't choose to work with a client unless we could see that they were also planting trees or that they wanted us to help them to do that. So it's, it becomes just part of the whole fabric of, of your organization. Um, so I think you have to involve your organization, people within your organization have to be involved in activities and language um, and services which reflect your values. They can't just be just something that, you know, that's just on the website and then you carry on with your day job. And I feel so much now, certainly over the past two years, um, but it has been changing certainly over the, you know, probably since the last recession, I'd say that in 2008, nine, um, people aren't interested in what, how well brands are doing or mm -hmm. how well organizations, we don't care how well you're doing. I mean, it's the biggest turnoff and it's very much changed, say, in social media and in, in online media or print even, that, you know, when a company publishes its financial results, those kinds of stories are just, you know, you switch off, we're not interested what what people want to know is of those resources you've you've created how are you using those to put more back in how as an organization are you are you putting more in than you take out you know what good are you doing so that's subconsciously i think communities expect to be community uh, to, to to understand the values of organizations it's not what the bottom line is this year yeah definitely but and also the struggles i think uh we don't want to hear only the good stories. We like to hear also the struggles and how you went through these struggles because that's how you relate mm -hmm. to people. C completely. And it's, yeah, so there's a lot more authenticity um, around business leaders. And, and we encourage um, the leaders that we work with um, to be honest about their battles and to be honest about where they've... Um, they've struggled and, and, and their learnings because that's how you create more leaders and the world needs more leaders. So we shouldn't have that as a, it's an entitled um, position. Let's, let's create as many as we can. And I definitely think there was a shift over the past two years where, you know, ordinarily very, very strong businesses suddenly had the rug from pulled underneath them. Um, it was something that we'd never been able to prepare for, um, for lots of different business sectors. So the, those leaders who came forward and said, I can only tell you what I know now. Um, and this is what I know now. There was so much more respect. Their stock went up so, you know, uh, in, in, a, in a great way compared to the ones that resolutely stuck to the way they'd always done stuff. And that humane leadership, wasn't it? I mean, we saw the businesses and the brands in the pandemic who came forward with big hearts. Um, and another of our values is walk a mile in another's shoes. And that was so important to us and to our clients that we the pandemic wasn't the same for everybody you couldn't expect people to respond or deal with it in the same way so it was about kind leadership mm -hmm. yeah no I agree and so what you're talking about is authenticity it's also about the vulnerability so we have to be able to be vulnerable and show ourselves as vulnerable. Like, I don't know, or I made a mistake, or here I need to invent myself and I need help. Yeah, <laughs> and that's great. when people also feel useful when 
Because when you're perfect, you know it all, you're successful, you alienate people. But when you, well, when people look up to you, but you still say, I need help or I don't know here, that's yeah. when we want to help and we want to support you and we have this, this emotional connection. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, uh, we have a value again is leaders create leaders. And we believe that um, everybody can be a leader to somebody. Um, it doesn't matter how much gray hair you have or how much experience or wealth um, or resources, but we can all, uh, we can all lead. And what I really felt in the pandemic when we were working from home is that some of the really young people within the team, when you took away that very, uh formal it's not we had a great office at the time but I don't mean that but you know there's a certain kind of hierarchy there are job roles when you're in that working environment take all that away you had some of the most incredible um demonstration of leadership from young people who were so supportive you know we check in with our team every day but I had some of the really younger people checking in with me actually calling me up to ask me if I was okay um and I think where it differed this time was because we felt so like a 360 degree support from, from everybody. We did, I didn't need to have all the answers this time. Um, and we were very, very clear every day. We don't know the answers, but let's just say, let's, let's talk about what we know today. We might not know what's going to come tomorrow. And as you say, um, that vulnerability means that people can come on that journey with you they don't feel intimidated that they've got to know all the answers because you're not saying you have them either. And that's yeah. a much safer way to be, to learn to be a leader. Cause otherwise, why would you want to be a leader? If you think you've got to have the answer to everything, which is impossible, that's just so off putting for so many people. So, you know, everybody loses. Yeah, completely agree. But that's, um, I see that's a big shift for a lot of people because feeling vulnerable uh, can sometimes also make you feel weak. It mm -hmm. isn't. I believe, mm -hmm. I truly believe in my experience that when you show your vulnerability, it requires a lot of strength mm -hmm. and people see you as strong also, mm -hmm. but you can feel weak because uh, it's not part of our society and our culture yet. No. And I think... Um, I think certainly where I learned my leadership or the, the role models I had for leadership in a business environment when I started my career was, you know, straight white wealthy men. Mm -hmm. That's, that's who was leading. So that's who, that's who you took your cues from. Um, and I remember my dad, um, I got upset about something and I ended up, uh, was, I did end up in tears. And, and um, you know, he said to me, that's just ridiculous. It's, it's a weakness, you know, this, and he said to me at the time, and we had, a, we, we, I would fell out with him for a very long time. You know, he said, this is, you know, why women are no good in business because they, they can't, they can't disconnect their emotions. Now that was a long time ago. He said that. Um, but I do think that was very prevalent in terms of how you were supposed to show up in the, in an organization. And there's been a long time and we've still got an awful long way to go in terms of our um, diversity and leadership. Um, we're working currently in um, Greater Manchester with our mayor um, and there's a, it's a, a piece of work called Operation Black Vote and it's to help and encourage um, a different style of leadership and to encourage people people from uh, BAME um, leaders that, that wouldn't necessarily believe that they had a voice and from an early age and working with some kind of socially deprived communities where there is so much ability but so that the view is that we don't fit the normal um, leadership criteria and that's a great you know it's a, it's a great disservice to to the kind of leadership we could have um, currently so so I think we have got a long way to go but you know we do it's better in terms of the fact that vulnerability piece I think it's so much more encouraged now in organizations than it ever was yeah on 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 one side I uh, I agree with you and eh? we talk about it we have role models and Brené Brown uh, with research from Harvard and and that's wonderful but uh, what I've seen in the last two years is moments of vulnerability 
but mm-hmm. also um, a lot of people putting their emotions in a little box to continue functioning. Really? Yeah, right. because uh, we've now, a lot of us are working from home in hybrid mode the whole day behind a computer, so even less mm. human life connections, a lot of work to do. And mm. so a lot of people put their emotions just in a little box and there is less meaningful connections, less uh, vulnerability, um, Well, there are still moments and it's accepted, but it's, I don't know. I see now this, uh, this I don't know if you see it also with your customers. I think it's different for us to some degree because the businesses that we work with and our organization, we, after that, we had a, we had a three month lockdown and then as soon as it was okay, you know, it was still advised to work, work from home, but we all went back into the offices and that was for a number Mm. of reasons Um, One of them was to, you know, we've got an ecosystem in cities and some of those really important small operators were just not able to operate and and their businesses were affected. So, you know, we we wanted to encourage people to come back in a safe way. But also, um, you know, working from home for if you're in a, a, a lovely house in a leafy suburb and you've got, you know, two great incomes coming in and um, that is a very different lockdown to a young person who whose family might not have wi-fi or they might not have you know they're they're sharing a laptop or they're in a little apartment where their working life is an inch from where they sleep in 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 a flat somewhere so so i our experience has been very much that that human interaction has 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 not been too badly damaged but then i was um, actually uh, getting off the tram the other day and i heard some two people chatting and they'd not even seen each other for two years in person but they only lived six miles away from each other yeah in in a working environment and that and they were you know this is an issue with big professional services firms like the lawyers the accountants banks they seem to be certainly from our experience the the last organizations to to come back Mm -hmm. and and then you know going back to your brand and your values if your values aren't intact and your culture isn't really strong if you're operating with people on a screen you could be working for any organization and there are stories of uh, colleagues and, and uh, who just have lost sight of who they actually work with and it doesn't really matter because one organization is the same when you're just interacting with people on a screen and you don't get that human connection that you've just been talking about yeah yeah no it's true and in the last weeks I've been given I've, I've given a lot of workshops to teams that hadn't seen each other for two years mm workshops or keynotes and and uh, just talking about emotions and vulnerability and how you feel and being able to share how they deeply feel with each mm-hmm. other changed a lot of them because mm-hmm. a lot of people just continued functioning and yeah. work became very transactional and, and less yes. human. Yes, I, I can see that and I have and people have said that, which is why um, we have really worked on a hybrid model, but mostly we're, we're in the office pretty much every day seeing clients and that's made such a massive difference to us. Um, I don't, I couldn't have coped with it any other way, but then I think it's then again, you know, it's, it's how do you create that culture and those values when you have people that are working in a hybrid way? Um, and it's the expectation of, you know, where's the purpose in an organization, you, you know, when everyone was together, there could be like a charity Friday or you have, you know, you have a fundraisers or a, you know, bake sale. You have those things where you can feel that purpose, but when you're not together, that's much more difficult, isn't it? To kind of hold together, I think. No. And it's, yeah, but you still can have that purpose. And that's what a lot of people forgot. Yes. It's like in the last two years, we focused on the essentials and we forgot the human side a little bit. Mm. We forgot the, the purpose why are we doing this yeah. and instead of just being focused on the to-dos and the tasks that needed to be delivered mm. yeah yeah so how do you see values evolving with your customers um i think it's a piece of work that's there's just getting more and more important um we have a lot of businesses who are returning into physical working environments and they have realized that they have 
those values are in a drawer <laughs> and that they didn't communicate them in that period of time. Um, and so they need to relook at those and make them relevant for today. Um, I am amazed at how many generic values there are that have, you, it, it, doesn't, it could be one of you know, a dozen organizations with the same very generic values and they're meaningless. Mm -hmm. they, they, won't, they won't make any difference. Um, we're seeing um, a real shift in terms of P uh, values first. So where an organization's values are, are their brand. So it's, you know, I'm having to walk the talk. So unless um, consumers or business communities see an organization uh, showing up around um, those, that value piece, what is their purpose? What are they here to do beyond the work that they have in front of them? You know, as I said, it, we, when people aren't interested now in how well an organization's doing, but what else are you doing besides your, your stock in trade is really important. Um, but then also it, from an, a recruitment point of view, particularly with the, a younger generation now, we find that it's just not enough to have a business which does something, which is in a certain sector. There's an expectation from your colleagues, um, you know, how, if I, if I join you, how am I going to help to make the community a better place? Yeah. How can I, how, what, what trees can I plant here with you? Can I have volunteering days? You know, what are we going to do as a team that's going to make me fulfilled when I, when I, when I show up? So that is absolutely at the top of the conversation piece that most organizations need to have. Um, and I think it's as important as having uh, bank holidays or private health. I think it's, it's that, what, what journey are we on, are we on together um, that I'm going to look back and, and feel that my legacy piece has been done with this organization, this brand. So it's so important. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we see in the statistics now that is why people are massively resigning because they are reviewing their priorities mm. and they mm. want this sense of purpose in their mm. career. Mm. So yes, they still want the salary and the holidays, but they also want to contribute to something bigger for their community. Mm. And um, yeah, that that's what's, organizations don't always understand in the talent management and there is now also a war for talent it's not easy to recruit talent but it's not just about doing some marketing it's about really changing your dna who you are as an organization so that you can attract people that want to work there and feel connected to your organization very much so we give them um volunteering days to our team um, we do a lot of work we do pro bono work at the team um, we are trustees on, on on different kind of charitable organizations we mentor so there's every single person no matter how much experience uh, or what age they are are all very much involved in something which is outside um, that you know the work that they've got to do on the desk on a, on a daily basis and it's woven in to what we do and, and as a result I think um You know, we talk about profits with purpose. It's really, it's attractive businesses to us who have got great values and they come to us because they feel aligned. But we're now doing lots more work in like not-for-profits not and, and third sector or really uh, successfully working with um, private companies or PLCs and helping to join them together with organizations that need support. So we're creating those partnerships where it's a win-win got a very strong corporate who's supporting a charitable foundation and that's that's when you really feel like what you're doing is has got some magic attached to it and that's why um and that's what the team really loves doing so yeah it's um, when you go home at night you know that you've, you've you've moved the needle in some positive way yeah exactly exactly and so i hope our listeners uh, will be will relate to that and the leaders that are out there will pay much more attention to that because that's when the profit follows i really believe that profit follows purpose and not the other way around and in the last two years we've been a little bit too much focused on the tasks the to do's the because we were in a crisis mode which is understandable but Still, we need to think about how we're going to move that needle for a better world. Definitely. And now is the time. And I believe totally that, you know, we, as you say, we've been through a crisis. But if we now 
don't use those opportunities to learn. And, and if we, we go and put those jigsaw pieces back in the same place, you know, we're missing a really important time in, in history to, to, to make a shift and, and, and really get organisations to show up in a different way and, and use that platform that they have. And that, to me, is the most important thing. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. Well, thank you. you. You seem to be doing great work with your organization and with your customers. So maybe you can tell us also where can people find you? Absolutely. So um, you can find us on Twitter at RDPR Tweets and Instagram is at Roland Ransfield. And our website is um, rdpr.co.uk. And then we also have a, um, a podcast called We Built This City. Um, and although it's about Greater Manchester, um, it's also about the leaders who helped to create Greater Manchester. And so there are some amazing uh, conversations in there about legacy and values and purpose. So um, it's, it's a great listen for leaders who want to kind of understand how what people have been doing over the past 25 years in Manchester. Great. We'll put the links in the show notes of the Thank episode. You. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, me too. It was nice having you here. It's, it's nice to see that... Uh, communication agencies are also worried about authenticity and uh, and uh, vulnerability and values because uh, to be honest I started my career in marketing so I worked with quite some agencies and what bothered me all the time was the superficial sides from the agencies that I didn't always like and uh, and and the fact that they were more interested in winning prices than really translating your message so it's nice to see this evolution at least in your agency so congratulations for that thank you so much thank you okay bye lisa bye muriel thank you yeah you finished another episode of rebel leader with a heart if you want more go to rebelleaderwithaheart.com for show notes and past episodes if you love the show subscribe leave a review and share it with a friend the more the merrier thanks for tuning in and have a great week you rebel leader with a heart